Hey, it's Soul, and this is part one of Visions for Dummies, the guide that will walk you ever so slowly through the new gameplay mode coming in BFA patch 8.3, Horrific Visions. Unlike other guides out there that are all about min-maxing and bombarding you with maybe a little bit too much information too soon, this is a multi-part series separated into the major phases of progression that you're going to experience in these visions. In this video, we're going to take the time to understand the foundation of how visions work, what to do to get started, and how to get this new fangled legendary cloak of yours as painlessly as possible. Today, our exploration of horrific visions will be limited to the tainted areas in either Orgrimmar or Stormwind, because the vision that you run into is going to rotate each week. Future parts of this guide will cover the more advanced sections, like the corrupted areas and then the lost areas. And later, we'll cover a walkthrough to maximize corrupted memento collection using masks and, you know, I might have lost you already. So that's why we're just going to take it easy. This first part, the tainted area, is the warm-up, designed to introduce you to the pacing of visions and be perfectly doable for just about everybody. If my busted up warrior who doesn't know how to interrupt can do it with the Warlords of Draenor gear, hey, you can too. So let's get started. Also for fun, every time I say the word visions, take a shot of your favorite hard liquor. Just kidding folks, don't do that, because you're definitely going to die. Let's first go over what you'll experience early in the patch. Horrific visions are going to be unlocked during your 8.3 introductory experience. By this point, you'll have completed Assault Objectives in Old Doom and the Veil of Eternal Blossoms, and you'll have collected this currency, Coalescing Visions. This is the stuff you need to buy a vessel of Horrific Visions, which is used to get into well, Horrific Visions. When it comes to making sure that you run a few visions every week, follow this simple priority. First is to complete the Old God Assault when it's available. This pops up once a week. Then compete all of the non-Old God Assaults when they're available. These pop every few days. Next is to complete the daily vision quest in the zone where the Old God Assaults are available. This is... Well, this is daily. And that's about it. Anywhere between 10 to 30 minutes a day will ensure that you get at least two vision runs a week. You can put in more work by farming rares, treasures, and dailies if you want to as well. Anyway, back to the intro. If you paid attention to the story, you'll understand the very basics of how sanity works after visiting your first regular vision, which sums up to this. Complete your objective before you die, or your sanity runs out. That's the basic loop. You run the content to get the currency, to run visions, to get upgrades, to get further into visions, to eventually get cosmetics and gear. So let's jump ahead just a little bit, and here we are at your very first horrific vision. To reassure you, it's totally okay to screw up the first time. After all, you're not really getting any help, and thankfully, there's nothing at stake. Regardless though, I'm going to walk you through what to expect, whether your first visit is in Orgrimmar or Stormwind. Your ultimate goal is to defeat the boss in the keep, either Alaria or Thrall, and that's pretty much it. When you first walk in, you'll be afflicted with one of three kinds of madness, an affix that messes with your gameplay a little bit. These affixes appear in the tainted zones and should feel pretty familiar, because they're the same affixes that you see in normal visions in Old Doom and in the Veil. Bloodthirsty is my personal favorite. It's going to periodically spawn a circle around you that sort of looks like the quaking affix from Mythic Plus, but it hurts everyone else but you. When the circle completes, it deals pretty decent damage to everyone inside, including allies, and it heals you based on the number of targets hit. It's great for big pulls, which is kind of a tank thing, and also for soloing. Desynchronized makes everything either faster or slower for you, so that includes move speed, cooldowns, attack speed, and so on. It can feel a little bit awkward at first, but overall, it's a great buff for everybody. Promised Power, in my opinion, is the kind of crap of fix. With this madness, you go through the instance dealing 10% less damage, but when you stand in a purple zone that spawns around you, it's going to give you a 25% damage buff. This works great for range, but it'll also be risky to stand in a zone when it could be sitting in the middle of danger. For melee, it's that much tougher. Also, while in these tainted areas, you lose 6 sanity per second before resistance kicks in. So let's talk about the mobs that you'll be dealing with in here, starting with Stormwind. Your first encounter is against an enthralled footman and a couple of slimes. These guys aren't very threatening, that is until the enthralled footman uses a channeled ability called Repel, 
it reduces damage taken and returns damage back to you. You can stun the enemy to stop the channel or just power through. It won't be a danger unless you're pretty undergeared and you don't have good self heals. The Fallen Void Speaker is a regular old Shadow Priest kind of mob that also includes Psychic Scream that you can't easily ignore. So just kick the cast, take out the mob, and move on. Guarding the entrance to the cathedral where Illyria is are two fallen Rift Walkers. They have two abilities. Rift Strike strikes on a line that deals damage and stuns you for a few seconds. It's telegraphed by the mob, who will aim a circle in the direction that the Rift Strike will go. Their second ability is called Shadow Shift, which is another cast that, when it's completed, it creates a heavy damage absorb. Stun the mob before the cast goes off, or otherwise burn through the shield. These guys otherwise shouldn't take too long. Defeating these guards is the only prerequisite to entering the cathedral. In your first vision runs, you don't need to progress any further if you don't want to, and you probably shouldn't, so just head on in. As you walk in, a short RP sequence takes place before Alaria becomes active. She uses an ability called Darken Sky twice, which throws down black and purple swirlies to avoid, and then she jumps to the middle of the room to cast Void Eruption, an AoE that you can completely avoid by hiding behind a pillar to avoid line of sight. Alaria repeats the sequence until she's defeated. Over in Orgrimmar, your first pack on the left side includes a shaman, a really nasty, dirty, hateful shaman, and you're gonna hate him forever, because he throws down what is basically a death grip totem that will pull you back from a pretty considerable distance, so be careful if you're trying to do a big pull across the map. After that are a couple of slimes that aren't a big deal, and then two Voidbound Honor Guards will stand between you and Gromash Hold, where Thrall awaits. They slam the ground with an ability called Break Spirit, which you can avoid, and cast Horrifying Shout, which, oh, guess what? It horrifies you. Interrupt the cast and burn him down. Thrall has a bit less of a regular pattern, but shifts between Seismic Slam, a stun that you can sidestep, and a sequence called Surging Darkness. Just go in and out of the purple stuff before it detonates, while avoiding Seismic Slam if it happens to line up while this ability goes off, and then kill him dead. Once Illyria or Thrall are defeated, the vision is over, and then, treasure. The reason your very first visit here is a little bit more difficult is because you have no assistance other than your level 1 cape. After this though, pay attention to the Chamber of Heart, because there are a few quests to start. One quest is going to complete the introduction, so go ahead and do that. There's another quest that gets you access to the Titanic Research Console, where you can use the Mentos that you get from outdoor content and visions to buy perks. This progresses much like a talent tree, and you will of course get Sanity, Restoration Orb first. It's an ability with 3 charges that lays down a field that refills 1000 Sanity over a couple of seconds. Your next selections should go towards Expansive Mind to increase your maximum Sanity. This is so you have a bit of a buffer before you need to use your Orb ability, which will maximize the 1000 Sanity that you get back. You can only use the orb outside of combat, and with 3 charges you want to make sure that you're not too deep into combat for too long. So just take breaks, but use these orbs later rather than sooner to maximize their use. There's also food that restores sanity, but I'm going to cover that another time. You definitely don't need to use sanity restoring food or external buffs early on. You can also fight while in the orb to save a little bit of time, and it'll prevent you from being affected from some of the corrupted effects during the duration. So for example, right before you pull Alaria or Thrall, there's a few seconds of roleplay. You can lay down the sanity field just outside of their aggro range, which seems to be, I don't know, like 30 or so yards away, and by the time you lay it down, the roleplay is over and you can engage. Anyway, back to being at the chamber, another quest will come from Rathian, and it's called Remnants of a Shattered World. This is the kind of quest that lets you upgrade your legendary cloak, so be sure to pick this up before going into a horrific vision the second time, and pretty much every time before you go in. This first round of quests will ask you to pick up specific torn pages, but that translates to defeating Thrall or Lilaria successfully. This quest will repeat until your cloak is at level 5, and by then, it's going to be significantly more powerful. You'll be able to resist sanity effects better, and have higher corruption defense which will let you gain more corruption from gear before negative effects kick in. You also get a new quest to upgrade your cloak further, but we'll get to that another time. I've mostly been talking about the minimum things to do to progress. Optionally, you can try to max the amount of Mentos that you earn by killing every mob that you see inside of Vision, or even progressing deeper into Visions. Thanks to Sanity Restoration, you now have that opportunity. But like I said, it's not necessary if you're not in a rush. 
I suggest that for now, work on just not messing up. And that's where we're going to stop for now, because most players won't be progressing any further than this for at least a week or so. But I urge you to subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell for when the next part of this guide is released. Later, I'm going to talk about the next phase of the legendary questline that has you venture into corrupted zones in Orgrimmar and Stormwind. I'll show you how to survive and let you in on other outside buffs and perks that'll help you along the way. So please like the video if it was helpful, and we'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy. Thank you.